natural response for RC circuits, we're going to set it up this way. Let's say that we have a voltage source over here, a resistor that's in series with it, and then a switch. Uh, let's put another resistor over here and capacitor right here in the center, like that. Now this is, let's call that one R, we'll call this one R1 just so we know it's different. And uh, this is V sub S. Okay, now this switch has two positions. That's position A and over here is position B. And there's a toggle between this side right here. The switch is originally in position A, but can be moved over to position B. And it does that at T equals zero. Uh, and that capacitor has capacitance C. Before T equals zero, the switch is over here in the left-hand portion position, in position A. So what's going to happen is uh, current's going to flow around here. It's going to build up charge on each side of the plate of that capacitor, and the capacitor is going to become charged. Uh, now, when the, the uh, potential difference across the plates of the capacitor equals uh, the voltage of the source, well, then there's going to be no more current, and we say the capacitor is completely charged at that point. Well, that is going to happen when uh, the voltage on the capacitor is equal to V sub S. That's when the capacitor is fully charged. If we flip the switch after it's been in position A for a very long time, then the voltage on the capacitor is that. So that is the voltage on the capacitor at zero uh, is going to be equal to V sub S. Now, just as a reminder, you know that the voltage on the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. So the voltage on the capacitor on the negative side of zero is going to equal V sub S. And that's also going to be the same as the voltage on the capacitor on the positive side of zero. So we know the initial voltage uh, for the capacitor. Now, at T equals zero, the switch is flipped over and we've got the capacitor and the resistor. So the circuit is effectively what you see right here. Now let's uh, pick a. Let's just say this is a node right here, and I've got a voltage. Uh, I'm sorry, a current going that way. I've got a current going that way, and then using node voltage method, if I call that one current through the capacitor and this one current through the resistor, then I sub C plus I sub R has to equal zero. Well, all right, I sub C. You know that that is C dV. DT. Now that V is specifically the voltage across uh, the capacitor, but you get the idea because there's only going to be one voltage here. Uh, plus, uh, I is going to be V over R for the resistor, and that has to equal zero. Okay, so once again, we've got this first order ordinary differential equation. Uh, the solution for this should be very similar to what we saw last time. In fact, I'm not going to go through the steps again, uh, but you can look it up. The voltage as a function of time is going to be equal to whatever the initial voltage is at zero times E to the negative T over tau. There is a difference here. If I, in fact, you may want to do this. You may want to go through the steps of separating the variables and solving this. And you'll discover that you get a different value for tau if you do that. Tau, in this case, is equal to R times C. So that's the capacitive time constant. Sometimes you'll put a subscript of C there to indicate that it's capacitive time constant. But in this case, there's no confusing it with the inductive time constant because we've just got an RC circuit here. Okay, so there is uh, the solution for uh, the time varying uh, voltage for a decaying RC circuit. So this is the natural response. Now, if you wanted to figure out the current, um, let's. there's only really one current here. So we could say, well, the current through the resistor, uh, I, that's just V over R. So you take its V. Uh, divided by R. In other words, you just take this uh, V at zero divided by R e to the negative T over tau, and you've got uh, the current there. Okay, what about uh, power? All right, things are getting crowded here, but uh, you, I think you can separate these things. P uh, equals I times V. Well, um, you take the I here, you take the V here, multiply those two things together. Let's see, uh, for I, we got uh, V at zero over R 
e to the negative t over tau. Multiply that times v at 0 e to the negative t over tau. Running out of room here, but I'm going to try and squeeze it in. You end up with the power is going to be v uh, at 0 squared over r times e to the negative 2t over tau. So there's a power uh, expression. Now, uh, we've also talked about uh, energy. I'm going to move right up here and to do the energy equation. Uh, the energy is going to be the integral from 0 to some time t of p dt. So you take this p down here that we just figured out, plug it in up there. Uh, whenever you do that, um, you're going to end up with an expression that looks something like this, one half c v zero squared times one minus e to the negative two t over tau, like that. Uh, to solve a, uh, an RC circuit, you find the initial voltage, you uh, figure out what tau is, and then you find the equation for either uh, V uh, or I, because it's always going to look like this. You're always going to have either a V or an I. Let's just say X is equal to X naught, that's the initial value, uh, E to the negative T over tau. So in general, that's what the solution is going to look like for the natural response for any type of RC circuit. And by the way, it's also very similar to the, the response that you get for uh, the inductor, so an, an RL circuit as well. Now, it only applies to uh, voltage and current, not to power or, or to energy, but if you want to solve a problem like this with one capacitor, one resistor, uh, yeah, there's your solution right there. You just have to figure out that value there and that value there, and then you plug it in and you've got your answer. Okay, so let's work a problem here. I'm going to switch pins. Let's work it this way. Let's say that we have a capacitor there and then a couple in parallel down here. Like that. They're connected through a switch and there's a resistor over here on this side. This is a 25 K ohm resistor. Uh, switch is closed at T equals zero. And uh, this one is four microfarads and this one is 0.6 microfarad. Over here, this one is 0.4 microfarad. Now the capacitors are initially charged before they get into the problem and we have uh, 10 volts across that one, plus minus like that. And we have uh, 60 volts across these two capacitors here, polarity like that. Okay, uh, now you know that uh, in order for you to be able to solve a problem, it needs to have one capacitor and one resistor. So we need to find the equivalent capacitance for that, and this resistor is still going to be the 25 K ohm. And once we uh, reduce it down to this form, then we know that, uh, let's see, what are we after here? The voltage across the resistor. You know that the voltage across the resistor, V naught, is going to be equal to whatever the voltage is at zero times E to the negative T over tau. So we need to figure out what this is, and we need to figure out what tau is. Okay, one of the first things we can do is combine these two together. When we combine the two that are in parallel there, remember these are capacitors, remember how capacitors combine, then this becomes still 25K there, still a switch here that's closed at T equals zero. Uh, this is still the four microfarad capacitor that has 10 volts plus minus across it like that. This has uh, 60 volts plus minus across it like that. But uh, the 0.6 and the 0.4 micro are going to combine to make one microfarad. Okay, now we've got these two that are in series. And remember the way that capacitor is combined. We can go ahead and reduce them down to one capacitor and one resistor now. 25 K ohm 
for that. And let's see, what's this going to be? It's going to be product over sum. So uh, 4 times 1 over 4 plus 1. So it's going to be 4 fifths capacitor. Uh, if it's 4 fifths, then that means it's 8 tenths. So this is going to be 8 tenths or 0.8 microfarad. Now the voltages, you, you look at the signs and the polarities here and the way that it's going to work out is this is going to be 50 volts and plus minus uh, polarity like that. Okay, we're at the point now where we can see what the initial voltage is across this. Whoops, I kind of left out my switch, but you get the idea. The switch is closed at T equals zero, and this 50 volts here is the initial voltage that's across the capacitor here. Okay, uh, so the initial voltage across the capacitor is 50 volts, so that means V at zero is going to be uh, 50 volts. In other words, when that switch is closed at T equals zero, uh, that 50 volts here is going to be the same as what it is over here. And the reason is because you cannot have an instantaneous change in voltage for uh, this uh, capacitor here. Uh, and when the switch is closed, this, this resistor doesn't care. It can, it can have an instantaneous change in voltage or current for that matter. So when that switch is closed, whatever the voltage is over here becomes the voltage over here instantaneously. So this is the initial voltage right there. Now we need to figure out tau. Tau is R times C. Uh, R was 25 times 10 to the third ohms. Multiply that times C. And the C here is the 0.8 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. Do that multiplication. And I believe you get out 0 0.02. And the unit's going to be seconds. So that's what? 20 milliseconds. Okay, that's tau. Now, if it's uh, 0.2, 1 over tau is going to be 1 over 0 0.02. So uh, that is actually 2 one hundredths. So it's going to be 100 over 2. So it's going to be 50. So 1 over tau uh, turns out to be 50. Okay. Uh, now that's just a coincidence that it's, you know, the same as that. It didn't have to be. So what do we have? Uh, v naught, which is the voltage across that resistor there, as a function of time, is going to be equal to 50 times E to the negative 50 T volts for T greater than zero. So there's our answer. And what's that look like? That's a decaying exponential. You know what that looks like. V of T versus T starts off up here at 50 volts and over time reaches zero in the limit. Okay, but it's a decaying exponential. All right, so that's a, that's a problem. We've worked that problem. Okay, up to uh, this point, we've looked at natural responses for RLs and RC circuits. And you should be noticing the patterns here. Uh, for RC, uh, we have the first order differential equation that looks like this, uh, plus V over R equals zero. And for RL, we had something similar, uh, L D I D T uh, plus I R equals zero. So again, first order differential equations. Uh, this one, uh, they both had the same form of solution. So in general, they both had a form that looked like this. X as a function of time is equal to X naught E to the negative T over tau. Now the X here was either voltage or current for either one of those. And we saw that since we only have, are able to solve circuits at this point that have one volt, uh, they have one capacitor inductor or with one resistor, so one resistor in either one of those two types of circuits there, uh, then w this is what uh, the current is going to look like. So if you solve for the voltage, the current's going to look the same. You solve for the current, the voltage is going to look the same. The difference is going to be what uh, tau is. Uh, tau for the RC circuit is just RC, and tau for the inductor is L over R like that. 
All right, that's sort of a summation of where we've uh, come to. Uh, now we're going to turn our attention to uh, the step response and we're going to see uh, some very similar parallels but uh, some differences as well. We'll do that next video. Let's roll.